So I'm going to talk about my experiences with auditioning for drama schools this year and I'm going to start off with my most traumatising audition ever. I got recalled for Guildhall which was something that I dreamed of. <sighs> like it was incredible getting a recall, I was so happy. I get in my recall, you know, we do a warm up. I get in, in front of my three directors for my recall. I start to do my first monologue, my Shakespeare monologue, which I've been rehearsing for eight to nine months. And can I just say my Guildhall audition was after my Juilliard audition. So I have flown to New York with these pieces, come back, you know, I feel these are strong, these are powerful, I am ready. I do my Shakespeare piece first, get halfway through, what happens? You see how there was just silence before? That's what happened. I had like a mind blank. It was, it was literally like, you could hear the dust flying across the floor from behind me. I can't explain what happened. To this day, I just, I just froze. I just froze and it, and it, it I never thought that would happen to me. I'll be honest, I never ever thought that I would be the person to choke. And I did. And I'm not sure whether it's to do with the pressure that I put on myself or it's to do with the fact that Guildhall really like eye contact. So I had a lot of eye contact with the directors. But I did practice my monologues having eye contact with people. I'm not sure whether I realised the significance of the situation then and there, which was... I got a recall for Guildhall, like they see something in me, this is my chance. I'm not sure whether all these types of things were just flowing in my head and it just, it just completely shut down my brain. Either way, halfway through my Shakespeare monologue, my brain disconnected from my body and flew up in the air and left me speechless and just very disappointed in myself. The directors were really lovely and they obviously said, you know what, do you want to move on to your next speech? And I was like, no, I want another chance for my Shakespeare speech. Did my Shakespeare speech, got halfway through it, boom, mind blank again. I can't explain what it was. And it's one of those things where like, the first time it happened, you know you can have like a dramatic pause and then boom, you remember your line and it's okay. I had like five dramatic pauses and then I knew, no, you. it's clear that I have gone a blank. And it annoys me because as I said before, I had rehearsed these pieces for eight, nine months now. Once again, maybe it's because I over-rehearsed. Maybe it's because I put too much pressure on myself. I don't know. I just completely and totally mind blanked and it was awful and terrifying and devastating and I was sorry I'm getting a bit emotional now I was very hard on myself that day that week that month um I just I just couldn't believe that happened to me I'm not gonna act like I've been performing for like 50 years and like I'm Dame Judy Dench that's not what I'm saying but I have been performing since I was like seven, eight, and I'm now 23, and I've never until that point forgotten my lines or mind blanked that way. I mean, yeah, I missed a the in a sentence or an a, but I have never just completely blanked out like that. And, you know, they say it happens to the best of performers, but I just honestly thought it would just never happen to me. In that recall audition, I when I blanked, obviously they asked my other two pieces, but I knew it was just out of courtesy and that I hadn't got into the final recall rounds. It sucked. It hurt. I mentally kicked myself for a very, 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 very long time. I called my drama teacher after that audition and cried my freaking soul out. I bit all my nails off, not that I'm superficial like that, but like I really, you know, did a number on myself physically and emotionally. And I also called my cousin and my very, very good friend and cried down the phone to them as well, basically being like, how can I get to such an important stage and, you know, really screw up that way? It's just not, it's just not me. Like, yeah, I, pressure does sometimes get to me, but I always, you know, rise to the occasion. And unfortunately, 
that time I fell flat on my face. It was, it was, as I said before, it was rough. That day I went to one of my best friend's houses and like cried my eyes out. And on the way to her house, on the train, overground, I was crying like, you know, a crackhead who wanted to go get money to feed her habits. I cried like a fat kid wanted cake. I, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried, I cried. I cried like I had literally just lost somebody that I cared about. They had died or been shot or been stabbed or been knocked over by a car. I cried my heart out. And you could tell people on the train did not know how to react to this girl sobbing her heart out. But I couldn't, I couldn't control my, my feelings. So as I said before that night, I went over to one of my best friend's houses, cried my heart out. I ate some of her mum's lovely brownies with loads of ice cream on it. I went through like three packets of Sensation Crisps. I hit up, when I say hit up, I mean I hit up hardcore that Ben and Jerry's fish food ice cream. Let me tell you, I think I put on like two stone that day. No joke, no joke, no joke. Hashtag true fact. As I said before, blanking is not something that I'm used to. It's not something that I want to get used to, but it is something that happens. And I don't know, I think I'm, I was indecisive whether to, you know, say this in a YouTube video, but I just thought that, you know what, everybody, has their bumps, you know what I mean? Like, not everything is always smooth sailing, and the most important thing is learning how to deal with it if it doesn't go the way that you planned. I learnt that, you know, I can pick myself up after, you know, flopping miserably, awfully, terribly. You can tell I'm not really over it, moving on. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know, it's weird, like, at the time, it, I knew that I would get over it, but it di still didn't ease my pain. I was really, really down on myself and devastated, and I really was very hard on myself. I think too hard looking back on it. Everybody screws up, everybody messes up, and it is the most important thing is how you deal with it. Looking back on it, I didn't deal with it well. In the audition, when I screwed up my lines, I think I was so hard on myself. I didn't do as well as I could have done in my other the two speeches which I had to do after my cock up speech. Next time, if I ever get put in that position, touch wood, touch wood, that you know, that doesn't happen again. But if it does, I hope that I take a breather, let go, move on, instead of holding on and really beating yourself up because that doesn't do anything other than make yourself feel like crap. What did I learn from my experience at Guildhall Recall? don't fuck up. <laughs> no, seriously. I learnt that even if you screw up, you will still be able to pick yourself up afterwards, to be honest. You know what? Like, screwing up at an audition is not the worst possible thing that you could do in life. There are murderers out there, remember that? Like, there are murderers out there. There are rapists. They're doing worse things than you are. So screwing up at an audition is not the worst thing that can happen. If Naomi Campbell can fall down on a runway and pick herself up, dust her shoulders off and still walk that runway like a pro, like a G, I can screw up an audition and still make it in the acting industry. Yeah, point blank to the period. I'm not giving up. This is, this is the point of this video is if you screw up, it's not the end of the world. You have to keep going. You have got to keep going. And I understand... I can only speak for myself. I'm very hard on myself when I, when these types of things happen, when I mess up, screw up. Obviously, I did not do it on purpose. You know, who the hell wants to screw up in a recall audition for Guildhall in front of three of the directors? Nobody wants that. But at the end of the day, these things happen and you have to roll with the punches. Like, as I said before, I was devastated. Like, like, I was... I was so beyond, I don't know what the word is. I think devastated, sad, upset, disappointed in myself. You know, the list could go on. I could throw out so many adjectives to describe how sad I was that day. But the point is, is that I survived. And you know, if you screw up, you have to keep going. You have to keep growing. Growing, going. Growing too, actually. That's, that's I said growing by accident, but I think that's an important, point to make that 
these types of bumps in the road all add to who you are and will hopefully prepare you for when you finally do make it. It'll be beautiful stories to tell to your kids and to whoever wants to listen about how, yeah, I screwed up for my Guildhall audition that year, but then the next year I got in. Okay, let me not jinx myself. I'm crossing fingers and praying that that's the situation that occurs because I'm applying again this year. That's all I've got to say. Um, you screw up, pick yourself up, dust your shoulders, keep going. I really appreciate you guys watching. Yeah, thank you. And bye.